because he called the club selfish, said the players were selfish, and he criticised the whole culture at Spurs after that recent draw at Southampton. They're fourth in the top flight, out of all cup competitions, and now he's gone. By mutual consent, apparently, after 16 months in charge, his assistant, Christian uh, Stellini, will step up as head coach for the rest of the season, with former midfielder Ryan Mason, his deputy, and probably his uh, liaison with the players as well. We have had 10 Premier League games remaining, and we have a fight on our hands for a Champions League place, Chairman Daniel Levy said. There's a lot more he could have said, and there's a lot you might want to say to him. I want to get the views now of Chris Cowlin, Spurs Chat Podcast host, who joins us now absolutely live. Good morning, Chris, and thanks for staying up so late for us, Macy. What an extraordinary announcement, so late in the day. Obviously, it's going to be a major talking point throughout the day here on Talk Sports and other stations as well, of course, but we're going to do it best because we've got guys like you on. So, in the end, this was inevitable. What are your immediate thoughts when you heard the news, Chris? Morning, Paul. Well, I was actually surprised that it took this long to uh, make this decision, but it is the best decision for all parties. Conte has obviously had a, a very um, hard year himself personally. Um, we haven't played attractive football. It's been really, really hard to watch. Um, I've gone to every single game in every competition this season, and every single time I've walked away from the stadium, um, I haven't gone, wow, what a game that was, although we've had some good results. But the way that we went out of the FA Cup and the Champions League, um, I wasn't at all surprised by the decision. It's probably the best decision, as I've said. Um, but it's now what we do next, because... You have to go back to the 2018-19 season uh, for us to have had a manager um, for the full season. Um, you know, we're, we're switching sure. managers every other year at the moment, and it's not good enough. The fans deserve a lot better. We deserve a lot more. Um, if you go back to the decision back in 2019 of sacking Maurizio Pochettino, took us to a Champions League final. He didn't spend a penny in 518 days. We sacked him. In my opinion, I think that was the wrong decision. We then brought in Jose Mourinho. We sacked him six days before a cup final. In my opinion, wrong decision. We waited 72 days for a manager. We appointed Nuno Espirito Santo. Another really poor decision. Um, we were looking at other managers like Paolo Fonseca and Gattuso at the time, um, which didn't really or, or doesn't suit the, the type of football that we want to be playing at Tottenham. And then you think, we get Antonio Conte Another serial winner. Surely this guy is the guy to get us over that line. Um, you know, win us a trophy for the first time in 15 years. And I feel very, very sad, very upset that it hasn't worked out. Although the football has been drab, um, I just feel sad that it hasn't worked out again. Um, and I just feel like the club now is a bit of a mess again. And we need a clear plan. We need vision. Uh, we need ambition on the pitch. I mean, the curious thing is, I think that Daniel Levy... I'm not making apologies for him, I don't know the man, but Daniel Levy seems to want to placate the fans and for his own benefit and for the financial future of the club, he wants to win something, but he must also be aware there's got to be a longer vision there. And someone like Conti, someone like Mourinho, is never going to give you that longer vision because they are by nature, I think uh, Jason Cundy calls them trophy pigs. Okay, they'll win, but they win at a brutal cost sometimes. And if you're playing brutal football, pragmatic football, and that's failing, you've got nothing to fall back on. You haven't even got the entertainment value. So, look, we, you know, we've tried to give you poetry on the pitch and win. You've not won, but we've got the poetry. At least you've got something you can talk about as fans, something you can salvage from a season. Yeah, you're absolutely right. And uh, when we had Pochettino there, we were playing a super exciting football. Um, I know towards the end of his uh, time at Spurs, we, we, weren't, we were far down in the league because he wasn't backed uh, in the right way he should have been. The ironic thing is, he took us to a Champions League final, uh, hadn't spent money in all that time, and he wasn't backed. Yeah. And then when you look at how, how Conte and how Jose Mourinho were given money to spend, it just seems weird how that's happened. But when you appoint play, uh, managers like Mourinho and Conte, they want the players straight away. They're, they're instant managers, um, you know, serial winners. They've won everywhere they've gone. Um, it's just, I cannot believe that I'm saying this. Pochettino, Jose Mourinho, Conte, no success. Daniel Levy's come out and said, um, you know, last night, amazing and loyal supporters. We are. But I tell you what, there's a lot of frustrated supporters right now um, because when we see the development of the club in all aspects of the club, um, it run extremely well. Um, but all of the managers say the same thing. Pochettino back in 2019, you can have a mansion, but you need the furniture to put in it. We all still feel like that. Although Antonio Conte was backed in the windows that he was at the club, um, the, the signings just weren't good enough. We want wow signings. And when when us Spurs fans think about how excited we are about about signings coming in, um, probably the most excited I, I feel uh, last was Jurgen Klingsmann coming in in 1994. That was some time oh, ago. No, that was a long ago. <laughs> 
to yeah, him uh, nearly 30 years ago now. Well, world class signings. You know, we yeah. want to be a club attracting world class players uh, and, 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 and having a real exciting team. But I think, you know, going back to Antonio Conte, I think he does need to take responsibility himself. I know he called out the players. I just feel that the, the fans are feeling let down on all aspects at the moment. They, they feel that the board uh, don't give enough. They feel that the manager has played drab football and the players, they just haven't given enough. Um, you know, when I go back to those games again, Sheffield United in the FA Cup, great opportunity to, for Spurs to put a, a cup uh, finally in the cabinet. Uh, we failed to deliver. Uh, Champions League game, AC Milan second leg. Uh, we were playing like we were falling up from the first leg. Yeah. We needed to score. It, it, it was terrible. And also, we've got that whole notion of, you know, Ponty blaming the players, talking about the, you know, it's their selfishness and their kind of lack of a, the, the winning mentality. It's his job to, to, to push them into that. It's his job to guide them into that. It's his job to actually make sure they've got that winning mentality rather than just be constantly bleating about people letting him down somehow. Let me ask you this. I mean, I wonder whether the fixation with top four, which is what all at the moment that Daniel Levy can cling to, which has great financial benefit from Spurs, though, well, that's to an extent a red herring because actually, the lack of trophies isn't just something that other fans can you know, take the mickey about. It's something very real in Spurs' history. I mean, when, when did you last win? 2008, was it then? It was 2008, Paul, 15 years ago. Yeah, far, far too long. And you think uh, there's too much focus on the, on, the, on the top four. What you need to do is, along the way, be a winning, a winning trophy side as well as that. But if, if in doubt, surely a trophy is better than a top four finish for a fan. Absolutely. Absolutely to a fan. For someone like me who goes to see the club home and away, I want to see success. I want to see those players lifting trophies. I want to see uh, that bus going down the high road, you know, with a smile on my face, lifting trophies. Um, look at Harry Kane, for example. What a perfect example he is. Um, the amount of quality players that Tottenham have had in the past 15 years or so, and managers that have gone out the door and they've found to deliver trophies. What on earth will Harry Kane be thinking now? Uh, you know, not winning a trophy. He's always said that he may think about leaving if the club are not going in the right direction. We're clearly not going in the right direction again. Another manager has gone. People like Harry Kane, leading goal scorer now for England, they need trophies. And also they need to be either sold this summer or to commit to Spurs, because a year from now he'll be on a free contract, and that is not going to be allowed to happen at Spurs, I would have thought. Let me ask you this finally then, who should come in? Would you take Pochettino back? I would take Pochettino back, Paul, but I think that whoever comes in now, um, it must be a project, it must be, uh, you know, the, the club must show ambition, they must show a clear plan, and this is all we ask for now as Spurs fans, because... And let's and be, be honest, it's, it's not a huge amount to ask for, Chris, is it? Huge thanks for your time this morning, Macy Chris Cowley in there from the Spurs Chat Podcast, talking to me, Paul Ross, and you guys on Talk Sport and Talk Radio, we're live till five.